Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, I'm going to do things a little different this time because I have a bit of a music-related rant to get off my chest. So, um, yeah, uh, as you probably know, um, this season's kind of like last season in that um, the company trucks uh, are a little bit old and they don't have uh, MP3 compatible. There's no aux in to plug your MP3 player in to the uh, car radio. Which is just, so you're just stuck with the radio. And um, we have this new station in town called I Heart 80s. And uh, in between songs, you'll get the announcer saying, the best music from the best decade ever. And um, I had to control myself to stop laughing at that statement. Because if you just use the um, end of the decade, like from... 86 to 89, you could easily make it a, make a case for the 80s being the worst decade for music ever. Because, yeah, I, I don't think, you know, when people are nostalgic for the 80s, they mean the early 80s. You know, the new wave era, the early MTV era. The, people are not nostalgic for, uh, you know, Richard Marx or Peter Cetera or Europe. It's just like, uh, oh, you know who I miss hearing on the radio? Pebbles. Said no one ever. <laughs> I'm going to get angry letters from the Richard Marks and Pebbles fan clubs now. <laughs> just, you know, I, I actually do know people who are nostalgic for, um, you know, Stock Aitken Waterman productions. God knows why, because they just sound god-awful. It's just like, you know, stuff from that era, that digital synthesizer era, just sounds really bad. I actually um, was listening to Genesis' Invisible, In Invisible Touch album, and I just, like, uh, Tonight, Tonight, Tonight was the song that made me think, you know, this just sounds terrible. What were they thinking? It's like one album ago didn't sound this bad. This sounds like someone dropped a toolbox down a flight of stairs. It's just not a pretty sound. And, um, yeah, um, but, you know, Samantha Fox is just like, nobody, I mean, is anyone nostalgic for her, for her actual songs, for her singing ability? Pause for audience laughter. No! Uh, they're, the only fond memories people have of Samantha Fox involve one of her page three posters, a bottle of baby oil, and a very sturdy washcloth. <laughs> anyway, with that off my chest, um, I'm going to like actually put a freeze on the Confirmed Bachelor's videos for a while, because uh, there's like some technical things that I want to get through, and uh, I can't explain it right now, but um, there might be some costuming changes in the future, but yeah, that and uh, a couple other things, but... Um, but I do have some things that are happening right now, so, um, there's, like, one, uh, show that I put on hold, and I say oh, I'd never do again, and don't get your hopes up, it's not the movie Explorer. Um, but, yeah, I'm gonna be rebooting that. I'm gonna be redoing it, and, uh, there's not gonna be a tasting this week for that reason. And the other thing that I'm going to be doing that's going to be, um, here pretty soon... Coming up on my uh, Merindia Productions blog, so um, keep your eye on that. Um, there's a new feature. It's not going to be a video uh, series. It's going to be a series of text reviews. I'm going to be reviewing every number two single in the history of popular music from 1955 to the present. That's why I have this, which I don't know if you can tell that what it is, because I peeled off the top layer of this ages ago. It's Joel Whitburn's Billboard Book of Top 40 Hits. So I was getting this out for, you know, some research. And is there a number two hit on this page? Ah, Woman by John Lennon. So that'll be something I'm going to be reviewing. I'm going to be reviewing them in uh, chronological order from 50, 1955 to the present day. So, you know, you can uh, correct me in case I make any mistakes. This only goes up to 1986, so I've been using some other sources uh, for so the later stuff. I've currently got it up to about 89. Anyway, and uh, to follow this, to finish this off, since I'm not doing a testing, um, look, towels! Y you're thinking, you know, why's Mike got towels out? 
It's because uh, I have kind of an obsession with towels. With the, like, beautiful printed, you know, beach towels. I don't know why. It, it kind of started when I was a kid because... Um, I used to have this towel that I would use every bath night, and I, it had, like, you know, happy face bubbles on it. And I think, don't quote me on this, but I think that I got that as a, you know, promotional offer from Mr. Bubble. You know, send in this many box tops and you'll get a free towel. Um, that was back when Mr. Bubble was powdered and came in cardboard boxes. I'm dating myself again. But uh, um, I'm going to really date myself in a second here because continue listening to this story. Um, yeah, that I use that every bath night. I would take it to the beach with me. Eventually, it just got so threadbare that my parents had to throw it out. I'm sure that had to be done kicking and screaming. But I found another towel, a replacement, another favorite. And it was, <laughs> get this, it was the John Travolta Saturday Night Fever towel. <laughs> And, you know, this this was around 79, 80. The whole Disco Sucks thing had kind of, you know, broken in about that time. And I really wasn't particularly into Disco, or I didn't particularly like John Travolta, but for some reason, I really loved that towel. And I would just, like, use it at every opportunity. And I, I didn't care that, you know, Disco sucked or whatever, but I, I would always use that towel at every opportunity. But yeah, that's kind of like uh, nurtured my love in beautiful towels. Look at this one. I got this. At, I found this at Thrift Town. It's it's made in El Salvador, and I, I should I need to show you because this is a freaking huge towel. You kind of have to look at all of this just to uh, get the uh, full effect here. This is uh, what's the artist's name? Carlos Riviera. Uh, it's, there's something else written below it, but I can't read it because, um, it's in towel font. It's, it's, all this, uh, plush here is making it unreadable. And, uh, here's something I got last year at, um, I think the grocery outlet in San Jose. The one on, uh, Foxworthy? Uh, don't quote me on that. But it was at some, uh, grocery outlet. It's the, the Tootsie Pop towel. It's, they had this. And uh, they had um, they had a blow pop towel too, which I almost got. But first of all, it was really freaking pink, so I was a little self conscious about that. The other thing was um, I don't know if there was another thing. I think it was actually I think it actually cost a little more. And like by the time I actually thought about getting it, they didn't have any more. So yeah, I kind of screwed up because um, people who know me intimately would say, Mike, the blow pop towel is much more you. <laughs> Anyway, with that cryptically obscene little bit, I'm just going to say goodbye now.